So I've said before that I think the circular saw is the most important saw for DIYers to own. Likewise, table saws, miter saws, and jigsaws pretty much round out a serious tool collection. But there is one saw that most DIYers have never even heard of. And it's so important that I've carried it with me to every job site over the last 10 years, and I've come to rely on it daily. In this video, we're gonna discuss what it is, what it does, and why it's the best saw for so many operations. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. The best saw you've never heard of isn't even called a saw. It's this thing, a multi-oscillating tool, or what's just called a multi-tool these days. It sounds boring and it looks underwhelming, but it wouldn't be a stretch for me to say that this tool essentially changed carpentry forever. See, circular saws, miter saws, and table saws use a spinning blade to cut through material. And jigsaws and reciprocating saws drive a blade in and out to do the same. But a multi-tool doesn't do either. Instead, it just vibrates. Blades and other bits attach to a fast mount system on the front of the multi-tool. Then, when it's flipped on, the tool slides these bits quickly from side to side in about a half inch range of motion. It's the only tool that utilizes this type of motion, and therefore it's the only tool that can effectively carry out certain types of cuts. And the most important cut it performs, by far, is the plunge cut. A plunge cut is a cut that enters the face of a piece of material and passes directly into the stock. Before the multi-tool came along, carpenters had very few options for doing this. You could use a circular saw to make a drop cut, but it's tricky, and the circular blade leaves large, rounded shoulders in the cut, so it's not clean. Jigsaws and reciprocating saws can be angled in, but that's also tricky, and the blade wants to cut whatever is behind the stock as well, which can be destructive when you're working on, say, a house. There used to be something called a jam cutter, which was sort of like a grinder with a circular saw blade. But they should have called that thing the toe remover, because it was prone to jumping dangerously out of cuts. So we had tons of saw options, and none of them that did the thing that we wanted them to do. Until the multi-tool came along. The multi-tool lets you make plunge cuts with almost surgical precision. Because the blade simply vibrates, it creates a narrow cut path for which you can easily control your depth. Using the multi-tool is incredibly straightforward. You just load the blade so the bent neck angles downward. Then you can hold it either underhand, like a briefcase handle, or overhand, sort of like a telescope. Then carefully, with your knuckles, wrist, or elbows braced on a sturdy surface, you slowly etch a score line with the blade. Once you have that clean line established, you can start pressing the blade in with gentle side-to-side -side sweeping motions. The vibrations kick waste material out with each pass. And very quickly, you've zipped right through the whole cut. That's it, but you can use this method for like a thousand different scenarios. I had a client who wanted to install a new air register cover in a cabinet base, but the new one was too big for the old hole. There would have been almost no way to cut this, even with a jigsaw. But I just roughly drew my cut line, then notched the new hole out with my multi-tool. Took about five minutes, and the new vent cover fit right into place. I've also used it a ton of times for notching drywall, a task I used to do with either a knife or a jab saw. But multi-tools go through drywall like it's air. More often than not though, I've used it to notch trim. I can undercut jams and casings with it to give them a little more bottom clearance or room for sealing. I've cut out and replaced whole panels in picture trim, like you see here, and I even got to the point where I could carefully recut miters in place by hand with the multi-tool. That's the most miraculous thing about it, trim work. It used to be that if you needed to cut a piece of trim that was already installed, you would often have to carefully pull it off, clean it up, back out the nails, then take it to your standard saw, cut it, then come back and reinstall it, caulk it, and paint it. That's a process that could take hours, all for just one little notch or cutback. Now, the multi-tool lets you make those shaped cuts and notches in less than a minute. It really is like having a laser in your hands that helps you remove just the parts you want to remove. On top of that, it can cut metal with metal cutting blades. I've used them to notch out steel wrap studs for pocket doors, or cut thresholds, weather stripping, pipes, and it's also great for embedded fasteners because the multi-tool can also make flush cuts. This is where you cut off protruding material at the base. Because the blade has that offset neck, it can sit basically flush on a flat surface. So you can direct that blade edge right to the base of an obstruction and carefully notch it away. I know plumbers use them all the time to cut PVC and copper pipe. I did something similar in my rolling table saw cart video. So no more spinning, overpowered tools for these delicate operations. The multi-tool does them all quickly and with amazing control. On top of that, much like a Dremel tool, it has dozens of other attachments. There are sanding bits, which are great for working into finished corners that palm sanders just can't get into. They also have scraping bits and grout cutting bits, which you can use for tile work or taking up chipped paint. 
More of these bits come out all the time and they're all really helpful to have. But when it comes down to it, for me, this thing is first and foremost a saw. And it's a saw that can save you countless hours of work, headaches, damage to property. And it has so much control and so many applications that I just can't say them all in a video. It completely changed my work as a carpenter, point blank. But I also never like to discuss anything good without also discussing the cons, and multi-tools do have some cons. So I'll run quickly through them here. One, it's loud as anything, and it can be dangerous. This thing shrieks at an ear-splitting pitch. You should always wear hearing protection when you're using it. Also, blades are incredibly sharp, and the tool is easy to drop. So if the blade is moving and you drop it on your toe, you can kiss your toe goodbye. The saw cuts through hardwoods with ease. I promise it'll go through skin and bone without pausing. Hold it with both hands and keep it away from body parts. Don't pass it over your body. One slip and you might regret it for years. Two, it's not great for long cuts. Because of its narrow sweep, it's one of the least effective tools for long pass cuts on wood. It can be done, but you're way better off using a circular saw or even a jigsaw for any cut over maybe 12 inches because they cut faster and with far more power and stability. Save multi-tools for the smaller notches and plunge cuts. And three, it's ineffective when blades are dull. When these little serrated teeth start to flatten out, the multi-tool goes from a smooth cutting machine to a set of old dentures. Cuts will start to take forever, the motor will bog down, the blade will often get stuck in the material. And to compound this problem, the blades actually dull down very easily. This is one of the major drawbacks of the tool. You have to go through a lot of blades. I would pretty much burn one up in a day if I use it for more than like a dozen cuts. So I would start a new day with a fresh blade out of principle. The good thing is that while blades used to be expensive and hard to find, they're cheap and very abundant now, especially online. Numerous aftermarket brands have begun to package universal blades that work for nearly any make and model. You can get cartridges of 25 blades or more and they'll last you much of the year. And they have blade variety packs for different materials. Blades will often say on the tang what material they're used for, so you can keep them separated easily that way. Likewise, there are a million different brands making multi-tools these days. Fine Tools invented this saw, but the cat's out of the bag now. You can take your pick from brands, and many of them are pretty good because the tool is quite simple. I went straight for this 20 volt cordless DeWalt when it was finally time to retire my old corded Bosch. This thing has been outstanding. DeWalt is a leader for this tool on Amazon, and everyone else seems to be chasing at the moment. That said, for occasional use, there are plenty of off-brand models that are totally adequate for DIYers. You can easily get a whole kit for under $80. So if you're going to park it in a closet and use it a couple times a year, I don't think you can go wrong with a high-rated, lesser-known brand. I'm going to link numerous multi-tools below along with blades and attachments. Please feel free to browse them. And remember that when you shop through these links, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. It helps us keep making videos, and we greatly appreciate your support. Anyways, that's my take on the multi-tool, the best saw that many people have never even heard of. If you're a DIYer and don't already have one, I can't recommend this tool highly enough, especially if you're tackling remodeling work. The plunge cut ability alone will change your projects instantly. What do you think? Was this video helpful? Do you love multi-tools as much as I do? Or do you use them for something that I didn't even mention? Please, let me hear about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.